Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. Hi, right. there you are. <laughs> Hi, thanks so much for joining me today. Thanks for having me. Can you hear me okay? <laughs> this is so funny. I feel like you're yeah, yeah, the, the connection seems a little spotty, but you are coming through. I am not on Wi-Fi, I'm just realizing. Do you have a <laughs> Wi-Fi? Can you put it on the thing? Slap it on the window? <laughs> it's so funny how uh, we're here to talk about some super sciencey things. And, <laughs> and literally, I don't know how to use my phone. I'm like... <laughs> Well, thank you so much for, for joining. I gotta say, as a huge Clone Club member myself, it is so cool that we're here to talk about new stories with the these same characters after all these years. Like, that's so rare for fans of TV series that end, you know, that's that just like hardly ever happens. Yeah, I feel like it mostly happens in like the fanfic realm, mm -hmm. like where fans like take the story and, and create, you know, backstory or story to come sort of thing mm -hmm. and this is the official this yeah. isn't this is canon thing, but this is truly canon that's so <laughs> cool <laughs> and uh, back when you finished the last season of orphan black did you ever envision a future where you'd be able to continue the story in you know a different medium in such a different way definitely um, I, I mean i think there were certain times when we sort of floated the idea of like would it be a cartoon or would it like could it exist as like they're the golden, like they're in their 70s and they're living in a house together. But but we never, you know, I, I, I kind of had put it to bed in a lot of ways and sort of it felt like a very complete story. But but having um, done the audiobooks now, it's really fun to feel how it does have like this con continuing expansiveness to it. And there's so much story there because the characters are so richly you know they were so richly written in the first place so there's so many places that you need to take them mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and so what has that been like for you getting to further explore and play around with these characters through audio form yeah it's like it's definitely cuts off a certain element of like what um you know the initial sort of like idea was which was so many like physical transformations that then required a physical man you know mannerisms that were different or um ticks things like that but now it's like <clears throat> trying to distill those into just a vocal performance and it's actually really challenging and really fun and and yeah just like it's the essence of the character in a lot mm -hmm. of ways hi clone club <laughs> i feel like people are saying hi and i'm well <laughs> ignoring them <laughs> hi guys yeah, I definitely wanted to ask you, you know, how it has been like taking what you've created physically on the show and having to adjust that to just be audio only. Like how how challenging has it been for you and how have you kind of overcome those challenges? I feel like the first season it was the of the audiobook is especially difficult because I was still like really attached to those physical things, but now it's been so many years and so much has happened it feels like uh it, it actually um i i feel more comfortable just with their voices so, you know it, it sort of has become the way i feel the characters and i do still kind of visualize them and there is little like i i was doing sarah yesterday and my back was killing me by the end because i was so like collapsed forward um so there are still like physical things that remain mm -hmm. And uh, I've got to gotta wonder, like, is it has it become easier for you to record versus, you know, going through filming it, being on the set every day? Like, is it, is, does it kind of take away some of the responsibility just having to record the audio? Yeah, what's, what I love about audiobooks, and I've, I've done a few now, and I really, I've always had such major respect for vocal performers who are, are exclusively voice performers. Um, because it is so hard and it's so full bodied, even though you're not moving. Um, but what I what I really love about it is like the kind of imagination sphere. Like it's very childlike in the sense that you're sort of um, everything is imagination. There's nothing that is, you know, physically in front of you. So you really have to just like suspend your disbelief in such a different way. And also, um, yeah, it just sort of puts you in this like weird other space in your head. 
it feels quite meditative. Like when I, when we get on like a roll, you're like just sort of going and it's, it's really fun. Mm -hmm. And so how do you get into the mindset when you go into record? Are you doing different characters at different times or are you just kind of going by the script and having to switch off with characters? Uh, thankfully, we're not doing those switches, which, you know, can get really muddy. And I remember with like read throughs, I was so grateful to have Catherine there to do it with me because she would read whatever clone was opposite uh, another clone in, in any scene. So we always had that back and forth because switching is tough. Uh, the accents don't stick. Um, but uh, yeah, we went through what we did this this time round was go through the whole um, series. I just choked for no reason. Uh, go through the whole series mm -hmm. as one character. So I got to feel that whole arc, which is um, really quite fun to do. Mm -hmm. And do you have a different process for getting into the mindset of each clone? Yeah, I mean, it's like little triggers that used to help me uh, on set, but then we have a bunch of new ones. So it's like, I don't know. I don't even know what, what we've done with, with, you know, to get there, but um, I have a very, very patient recording friends over in the booth. So there, they let me do my thing. <laughs> that sounds very helpful. Uh -huh. <laughs> Do you have a favorite clone to play after all these years? Um, I mean, I, I've always loved Allison and I've always loved Helena. Um, Helena's more fun when I get to be physical and Allison sort of remains fun in the voice because she's so nuts. Um, <laughs> but uh, I really enjoy and, and I'm excited to bring back Vivi this season. Uh, she was really fun to to differentiate and to find um and then yeah there's a, there's there are going to be new clones as, <laughs> i don't know how to pronounce your name but <laughs> yeah all right well you got to give us some preview about some of these new clones that we're going to meet this season because that is so exciting <laughs> there so there's a bunch of um there's a, a few from from there's a blast from the past um, but then there's also, uh, we have a new clone who's called Blythe, who's sort of a wellness guru. And um, <laughs> who knows what her deal is? I will not tell you, but she was very fun to do. <laughs> My mind is already running wild with the possibilities. <laughs> <laughs> and so where does season two of uh, the audiobook pick up? It picked up, well, we know, so I'm so bad with spoilies, but um, <laughs> I don't want to tell too much, but, but the clones were, you know, outed last season. Um, so everyone is aware now of who they are. Exist. My phone is telling me that it is dying. Um, oh, no. And Kofine, uh, as now they are called, um, is pregnant. So that's where we start off. So um, Kira and Charlotte, who sort of, um, you know, uh, sounded the alarm about who they are, are now uh, dealing with the consequences of, of that. And all of the clones are sort of dealing with the ramifications of suddenly being in the public eye, which is um, not a fun thing for a lot of people. That's, it's so interesting because I feel like they've spent the entire TV show fighting to stop that from happening and now we're actually seeing that happen in this new story and that if there's yeah. no i feel like no one's going to be able to predict what happens next i i certainly can't <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah it was really exciting to read this season i'm i really i love it it's very fun and obviously without saying what happens what was your reaction when you saw where the season goes yeah i i loved it i i feel like it it really um it's prescient and uh, it's really inside of a lot of what people I think are, I, th there's a lot of like paranoia in it, classic Orphan Black, but, um, and, and topical paranoia. So things that people are contending with right now in terms of the world that we're living in. Um, you know, that's, I think what, what's always been cool about Orphan Black is sort of staying um, inside of those conversations and sort of pushing them and trying to find the edges of them a little bit. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. As uh, wild and uh, fantastical as 
Orphan Black always seemed, it always did uh, have its finger on the pulse of, you know, what everyone was feeling in the real world at the same time. That was always really cool to see. Yeah. And it's like, you know, still, still sort of talking about the idea of like autonomy and consent and all of that, but in a very different way, um, which I'm, I'm excited to see what people think about it. Mm -hmm. And um, what do you think is going to surprise fans about where season two goes? Ooh. Hmm. Well, Blythe, Blythe's, Blythe's a, a whole um, a big question mark. Um, I think Charlotte does some really interesting things. And I don't know. I say, I don't know. I forget. <laughs> I just <laughs> finished recording like four minutes ago. And I'm like, what happened? <laughs> what was it? <laughs> Well, with all those characters rattling around in your mind, that is yeah. no surprise. <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> yes, Rachel Duncan's back. Oh, well, like Rachel may have, I think, they have a little interaction. Oh. Um, Kira's back, yeah. Hey, DM Parrish. <laughs> <laughs> I love Charlotte, too. Sorry, I'm just trying to do all of these things. I know the comments are going so fast. There's a lot of clone clubbers <laughs> here mm -hmm. today. It's so exciting. <laughs> awesome. Did you um, learn anything throughout filming the or recording the first season that you applied to the second season to make it go a little bit smoother for you? I think I think it was staying in one character at a time was really helpful and like feeling that whole arc. Um, What's exciting about this season is that we've got, um, t you know, two other cast members who are going to be vocalizing with me. Um, so we've got Evelyn, of course, and Jordan. Uh, and that's really exciting to me because both of them vocally are very, I mean, they're just incredible performers. But like Jordan's the best mimic I've ever heard in my entire life. And Evelyn is, I think Evelyn has like this whole music career right now. Like I keep seeing her like performing on stage. So we get that voice too, which is great. <laughs> Did you guys get to record together? No, we're all in different cities, but, but we do, uh, you know, we will, we'll see how those scenes work out <laughs> when they <laughs> recorded them all differently. But, yeah. That sounds so awesome. It's going to be yeah. so cool to hear all of your voices together again. Yeah, I, I there might guess. be another member as well who's coming back. Ooh, can you <laughs> hint or tease? <laughs> that was my hint. That was my tease. That was it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. Well, everyone's going to run wild with uh, trying to predict who that is. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> And uh, how long did it take for you to record season two? Um, we we did it in like four days. Oh wow, That's amazing! It's like you know long long days, long sessions, but but it flies when you're doing it. It's very fun. Mm -hmm. Wow, that is incredible. <laughs> and uh, you know, considering how Orphan Black did have such a perfect ending, how has continuing the story? in you know the next chapter has that changed how you like think or feel about how the original show ended yeah i mean i think i think it's like it is really chapters you know it's like that first the first show the the show was about one thing and even each season was kind of targeting a different theme um with like an over overarching sort of you know um viewpoints on the world um, but I think what's cool about this is that we have these two sec sections that are like totally different, you know, thematically, like they still ring, you know, very true to Orphan Black, but, but they have expanded the world and we're like, you know, we knew about all these other clones who, um, Kofin had gone off to, uh, vaccinate. So it's, it's, you know, it's getting to see into all of those little, those lives that are, um, that we didn't get to see during the series. And yeah, the expansiveness of the universe. Mm -hmm. And uh, if we could see, you know, the story continue for many, many more seasons, what do you want to see from the future of the next chapter? Mm -hmm. I I want to see what those uh, what Helena's babies do, <laughs> what they get up to. 
I want to see their like teen life. <laughs> like a Degrassi style Helena's kids at school going through it <laughs> with all the things that Helena has taught them, but just trying to be regular teens. <laughs> <That's what laughs> <I would see. laughs> now that is something I never thought that I needed until right now. I absolutely need, need, need to see what it's like. Arthur and Donald. <laughs> Those are going to be two really crafty kids. Yeah. I wonder if she'll dye their hair. Oh, she has to. <laughs> the she colors are right there. Hair. Yeah. <laughs> and um, looking at, you know, you've got obviously got a lot of really exciting projects coming up. Some are super top secret that we are not allowed to talk about, but mm -hmm. we absolutely can, like Power Trip, which sounds like it's going yeah. to be quite a different project from what fans have seen from you before. So what can fans expect to see from you in that? Um, I'm not sure what I can say about Power Trip, but it's a really great, it's an awesome audiobook uh, and very, um, a great character that um, I'm getting to play who's sort of a, a mess um, and has been sick a lot of her life and is now like getting a chance to be um, powerful and what that means uh, in terms of how she wields it and how she contends with it, with this, uh, yeah. And so it's, a, and it lives in the sci-fi realm, but it's also like, you know, dating and it's great. It's very fun. And what has that been like for you, executive producing as well as starring? It's fun. I mean, it's just fun to um, have some like creative input into how things go. And, and just like, a, I, I just love discussing that stuff with people, even if it's not, you know, even if, even if the, the notes don't go anywhere, like I'm happy to just have those conversations. I'm just excited by other creative people and, and love to like break down the scene or break down the story or see what we can dig into more. And, yeah, it's it's super fun. Mm -hmm. It does sound like a really fun aspect of your job. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, and it's like a new thing. It's definitely a thing that Orphan Black like primed me for because there was so much collaboration there and so much discussion about new clones or whatever. So it, it's it's quite cool to to now expand that into other projects. Mm -hmm. And uh, what are you getting to do with Power Trip that you've never gotten to do before with the role? That's a great question. Um, well, it's it's it really is like in in a lot of ways like a monologue. You know, it's really inside of her head, um, and so uh, it's like a one it's like a one person show. <laughs> it's like you know, just it's in, internal and and it's comedic and um, yeah, all that stuff. It's and we haven't recorded it yet, so I'm excited to see what. What, what we do with it. Oh my gosh. Well, that sounds so exciting. I cannot wait yeah. to, to hear what to, we can uh, expect from that one a little bit more. Um, <laughs> but, you know, looking back at Orphan Black, is there a favorite scene that uh, you'll always remember for any specific reason? I flash back a lot to um, the craft room, just many different things that happened in the craft room. Uh, because it was just such a great set. It was such a weird little set. Uh, Alice and Donnie were often talking about like awful things that they'd done, but in this kind of like bubbly, hyper-organized setting. So it was always, you know, like a fun uh, contradiction, you know. Uh, so I don't know if there's definitely like one scene, but, but those ones always, they always felt like a little breath of fresh air after like some heavy lifting. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. even watching those uh, as a fan, that was always definitely a breath of fresh air too, because it was <laughs> from the rest of the show. And yeah, <laughs> their yeah, relationship was always such a fan favorite. <laughs> Amazing. Well, that is about all the time we have. So thank you so much for joining the Clone Club today, Tatiana. Uh, season two of Orphan Black: The Next Chapter is out October twenty ninth. So Everyone be sure to check that out next week. Thanks, guys. Okay. Thanks, everyone. Thank you, Tatiana. Thank you. Bye. Bye. See you soon. Bye.